Welcome back to the Whiskey Rebellion Moonshine Company. Today, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the Moonshine role, because there's a lot of misconception going around about this particular new Frontier Pursuit, and I'm going to try and square everyone away with exactly how much money the Moonshiner role can make, and I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know about this role, so I do hope you all enjoy this particular episode. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way right off the bat, because I do get this question. I've seen at least two or 300 comments about this, and it needs to be mentioned right off the bat. The bar and the band itself, they do not offer you any additional income. I've seen some people saying that possibly it offers something like some residual income, or maybe some residual XP or passive XP, uh, but that does not seem to be the case. This is really just meant to be able to have fun with a posse or being able to uh, invite people into the area because you don't need people to be in your posse to actually be able to take advantage of messing around the bar. You can make friends this way. You can potentially find new posse members and you can play with the actual instruments, which is really cool. Um, basically, every single one of these instruments can be taken over by somebody in the bar and it's, it's a lot of fun. There's a bunch of different songs and quite frankly, the music is good, but I, I'm enjoying this update a lot. But unfortunately, the band and the bar do not make you any extra money. Now, a lot of people are saying this doesn't make any sense, and I do agree. I feel like you definitely should make money for that. Um, but I, I guess what I'm thinking is maybe since you're supposed to be splitting this business with Maggie Fike, that Maggie Fike gets the money from the bar, and then you get the money from selling the moonshine. I don't know if that's the logic behind it. But regardless, I definitely would like to see Rockstar actually include some passive income or even XP from the bar itself. Because people are drinking your moonshine, you gotta make money, it's a speakeasy, man. Uh, but regardless, the next misconception is that you can't make any money from this job. This job is actually very lucrative, and uh, we're gonna get into that in just a minute. Now, uh, right now, it's showing that our mash price is going to cost $50. Um, and you can reduce this very easily all the way down to $10. Never spend the full $60 to buy your mash. Uh, you're going to be doing yourself a major disservice if you actually do that. Now, if you're wondering how to reduce the price of your mash, you could do two things. Well, one of two things, or two things. Um, but you either need to do a bootlegger mission or a actual... Uh, story mission. Now you can redo story missions and you can redo them at higher levels as well, which is actually a really cool feature. Uh, but what I recommend doing is doing the bootlegger missions. They're very easy to do, they're very quick, and quite frankly, they're a lot of fun because some of these. Like, you can actually get into a bar fight, you can set people's fields on fire, you can take out the taxmen. There's a lot of really fun things in here and actually makes it feel like you're running a business. I was really hoping to get a bar fight for this one, but this is actually a mission that I haven't gotten before. We actually have to search for the Moonshiner camp. Usually it's like blowing up a still or taking out the, the revenue uh, people. Um, but the really fun ones, in my opinion, are burning the fields and getting in an actual bar fight. And you end up fighting, like, a boss brawler, which is so much fun. We've got the camp here. I'm guessing we just gotta destroy everything here. I don't know if we're supposed to kill people. But there is one trick to this. When you get to the destroy the moonshining stills, you... Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we gotta destroy here. Um, if she asks you to poison them, then you legitimately need to poison them. You don't actually need to, but you will actually get uh, bootlegger materials if you do it the right way. If you blow it up, you'll still get the XP, same amount of XP and stuff like that. But if you poison the still, you'll actually get the materials needed to flavor your moonshine, which is going to help you out in the long run. I just realized that these pistols are super duper dirty. Excuse me, sir. You're supposed to be dead so I can blow up all of your stuff. Yeah, no, these these poor pistols, they're so dirty. Um, but there's also some tips and tricks into the rotation that you're going to want to do to maximize your, uh, basically, the amount of money that you're going to make and just optimizing your time to do things effectively. So that way you're not ever wasting any time. It's a relatively simple rotation. We're getting to that in here in just a second after we murderize some more people. Who wants the Christmas hammer? Can I quick switch? Do they got fire bottles? You got fire bottles, bro? Not now, home skillet. It's the holiday mother freaking hammer. <laughs> if you haven't purchased the hammer from the fence, I highly recommend it. It is the best weapon in the game. Good night, sweet prince. 
But yeah, most of these missions take about on average two minutes to complete. Ooh, we got rank 15 moonshiner. We got the master distiller page, which I've been waiting for. It's going to reduce the amount of time it takes to actually um, make the moonshine, which is going to drastically, hopefully drastically increase our profits. Now, there's one thing that you're going to want to do while you're down in this area. There's a couple recipes of moonshine that are going to make you quite a bit of money. And the reason why I like keeping my camp down on the bayou is because a lot of these resources are literally right around us. It's super good. We're just outside the camp. There's a few things. You're going to want to farm up stuff down here and here. There's going to be huckleberries and the vanilla flowers that you need. Now, there is a cooldown for the bootlegger missions. If you want to be very effective in doing the moonshining roll, then you're going to want to spend this downtime actually gathering the resources that you need to craft the flavoring for your particular moonshine. And just outside of the shack in the bayou is two of the resources that you're going to need um, for up to level 15 and then past level 15. One of them is this huckleberry uh, bush right here. I'm going to show you two spots on the map to get a ton of these. So literally right outside the bayou shack right here is going to be one and there's actually a whole bunch around here and then another spot to get another like 15 is right along this road uh down here just southwest of saint denis so those are going to be really great you're going to need that from basically one until uh i guess i guess one until level 12 you're going to be needing the evergreen huckleberries and then another location basically what you're going to do is you're going to do one uh, mission down here one bootlegger mission you're going to collect the resources down here and then you're going to go uh, do another bootlegger mission then you're going to collect the resources that are up here uh, for the winter green berry now the winter green berry is going to give you the other resource to craft that one recipe and it's going to be a bunch within this particular spot above brandywine drop uh, so collect the winter berries there and then once you do that, then you do another bootlegger mission, which is going to get you reduced down to $10. Now, the last bootlegger mission, you go from $20 to $10. So it's not quite free. So you don't need to do that last one if you don't want to. But if you really want to be a stickler and save money, then I would recommend doing it again. Now, the other item that you're going to need for above level 12 is the vanilla flowers. Now, they are all throughout the bayou as well. A lot of people have mentioned that they liked tall trees as another spot but quite frankly I, I've played at tall trees and the bayou is still my favorite people are going to have their own you know favorite spots but the bayou for me in particular especially with gathering resources is my favorite but you're definitely going to want to craft those vanilla wildflowers when you get the chance to now another thing to keep in mind is if they wait too long to either buy the mash or to do another bootlegger mission, you can lose the benefit of the decrease in the mash price. I'm not exactly sure why this happens, um, but if you wait too long, it will go back up like $10. That's why we had it at 50 instead of 60 is because I did one and I took like an hour break. I came back and it cost 10 more dollars than than it did before so right now we're down to $30 if we do another bootlegger mission it will reduce all the way down to $10 but since we hit level 15 the strong moonshine now takes 48 minutes to produce instead of 60 minutes uh, which is a pretty decent amount of time to be able to make up to $225 now that we've reduced our price and purchased the strong moonshine we got to flavor our alcohol now that I'm level 15, I've got access to 1-star, 2-star, and 3-star moonshines. The one that I recommend crafting until you get, like, the Spiced Island or one of the other ones is the Evergreen Moonshine. You're going to need ginseng, wintergreen berry, and evergreen huckleberries. You can get the ginseng pretty much all over the place. Um, but the I sh already showed the locations for the evergreen huckleberries and the wintergreen berries. That's going to be the best thing that you can craft until you unlock something like the Spiced Island. Uh, and there's a couple other ones too, like the ah, the Wild Creek Moonshine there. Uh, but the Spiced Island Moonshine is one canned apricots, which you can buy in your catalog. Caribbean rum, which you can buy, and or you can collect that. And then one currant, which is very, very easy to get. So we're going to go ahead and buy this one. And now we just got to wait uh, that 48 minutes to be able to deliver our moonshine. So let's get into the actual numbers of how much money this roll will actually make while we're waiting for our batch of moonshine to be created. So, for the trader roll, in four hours, you're going to be able to make uh, $625 with a long delivery. Now, with that long delivery, you do stand a chance of getting griefed and having everything lost, uh, or you can make $500 in that same four hours and do the short delivery. Uh, now, with the moonshiner roll, 
And you don't stand the chance of having your stuff blown up by... Well, I guess people could actually blow you up with dynamite. Um, but you do have the chance of degrading your materials. Now, it's really easy to not have your stuff degraded. We're going to go over that during our delivery section of the video. So if you're having issues doing this solo, I will be showing how to do a delivery and not lose any of your moonshine. Uh, but in the same amount of time as the trader, so in four hours, you can make $1,125 of profit with the Moonshire. Now that is really good. That is almost double what you can make with the trader. That is really good. Now, it's not as good as the collector when there is a full collector map available, um, but it is definitely the second most lucrative job in the game, and in my opinion, significantly more fun than the collector. Our next batch of moonshine finally just finished, and uh, we got a new dapper outfit. Now this is actually a combination of two of the different level 15 moonshiner outfits, and I think it looks amazing. I actually decided to take off the hat. Uh, I don't like the way the majority of the hats actually look in Red Dead Online. They sit a little too high on your head. Um, but this looks really good because now, for those of you that don't know, you can actually modify the outfits. If you have multiple of the same outfit, you can swap out like the top half and the bottom half. And you can kind of mix and match different outfits within the role. And I think it looks really, really good. But anyways, we've got a full delivery here to do. And uh, it's time to talk about some tips and tricks to make sure you get all of your moonshine to the destination safely. Now, when you go to your moonshiner business here... You're going to have the opportunity to sell your moonshine. Now, there's always two people. One where it's going to be worth nothing. and Well, not nothing, but... And then one where it's going to be worth the actual price that you wanted to get out of it. Uh, so we're obviously going to sell it to good old Nathan Adair here. And we're going to get there with all of our moonshine bottles intact. So there are a few misconceptions... Yeah. Uh, with delivering this particular wagon, at least from comments and during live streams and inside of videos. A lot of people are saying that you need to go very slow to not lose any of your moonshine. That's not really the case. Unless you're just a really, really bad driver, um, the only way you're going to lose quality on your wagon is if it gets shot or if you go off the road. So if you're going too fast for the road that you're driving on, uh, which is why I like to be in the bayou because everything is nice and flat, the roads are very easy to navigate. If you're in tall trees or up in like the big valley and stuff like that, you're going to lose quality on your wagon a lot because that train is just really hard to navigate. Because the second a wheel goes off the road, you're going to lose quality. Um, and if you lose too much of this little blue bar, you're going to start losing moonshine bottles. Now, a lot of other people have mentioned that you can go through these checkpoints without actually... Uh, having to kill everybody. I have not successfully had that happen. So what I do is I roll up to like right about here, I hop off and then I murder everybody so that the wagon doesn't get shot up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's only a couple people you gotta murder. And as long as you're not on your wagon, your wagon's not gonna take any damage. Don't go too far from your wagon though. If you go too far from your wagon, it's gonna disappear and you're gonna fail the mission and lose everything you've worked hard to get. So just make sure you don't go, like, more than how far I went, because you might very well lose your wagon. But there we go. Checkpoint has been cleared out. And now all you gotta deal with is the next wave. And pretty much all you need to do... If you're playing solo, what I recommend doing is... All you need to do is just pull out your weapons and then aim. And your cart will automatically drive itself. It'll slow down when it needs to. It'll turn by itself. That's all you need to... Excuse me, sir. Don't F on me. I'm trying to deliver moonshine! Okay, and now your cart will drive by itself, so you don't have to worry about crashing or any of that stuff, and you can take on any of the people behind you. This is probably one of the best things that a lot of people don't know you can do, is that you, your cart will automatically drive for you. So if you're playing solo, this is going to be like a life-saving tip. As you can see, the horse slowed down really nice around this turn, so we don't lose any quality. And wham, bam, thank you, man. We might have one more wave of people to deal with, uh, but usually it's just one and when you're playing in the bayou, which makes, which is another reason why I say the bayou is the best shacks. People still like to say tall trees, but the bayou for me, after testing this for three days at every location, pretty much all the money I spent on this update is moving my cart around. The bayou is by far the best spot. It's the safest spot. Everything's really close and you're going to get your full deliveries every single time. And there we have it. Although, we seem to have bumped something at the end, but we still didn't take enough damage here to actually lose any money. 
The moonshine was sold, baby. And here we go. 966 Moonshiner XP. We got a new level. We got a harmonica piece. And it looks like we actually leveled up our uh, Outlaw Pass. $225 for the delivery. And what's really nice about the Moonshiner over the Trader is that the deliveries and the missions themselves are all significantly faster. So everything is much more fast-paced with this particular role. And I think they're starting to listen to the community to where we want to be rewarded for doing things speedily and effectively. And the Moonshiner role is the first one that actually does that. You don't have to wait for the timer down to get more XP or more money. You get the same amount of money in XP regardless of how long it takes you. And I think that is perfect. But regardless, that is all the tips I have for the Moonshiner roll. If you follow these, you're going to be making a ton of money. And you're going to be getting your full deliveries. You get the party in your bar, which is awesome. Oh, we got a Moonshiner award for that. Really nice. I still haven't figured out what the extra... There's one skill page that says you're supposed to get an extra buyer order. I have three accounts and I've tested it and I haven't seen any changes across any of the accounts for that. I was really hoping that it would help us make more money, but it really doesn't seem to have done anything. Maybe it's glitched out on the PC. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, thank you all so much for watching. I do hope it helped out. Make sure to slap that like button if it helped in any way. And I'll see you all in the next one.